So here we go. It is 7.02, so I don't want to wait too much longer. I want to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Center for Communications and Media Relations. You are at our open house, and we are located at Verona High School. So we're excited that you have joined us tonight. Uh, uh, we, are, we are working to make this an interactive session. Um, so um, as we have people who are joined in, uh, we're going to have different folks who are going to talk and introduce themselves and spotlight and all sorts of good stuff. So with that said, I am going to go ahead and share my screen um, and share our presentation for the night. We do have lots of folks who are here with us tonight. So uh, my name is Heidi Kraft and I am the director for the Center for Communications and Media Relations. And I teach 10th grade communications, 11th grade English, which is actually AP language and composition. Um, and I also teach newspaper. And in the past, I've taught our 12th graders. So um, welcome tonight. We're glad to have you aboard. Um, I'm going to jump to our next person, Mr. Aaron Willoughby. Aaron Willoughby, if you could introduce yourself, please. Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. My name is Aaron Willoughby, and I teach um, 10th grade communications as well as 10th grade English. And I also teach uh, sometimes the seniors. I'm teaching the seniors this year. And I teach all the theater arts at Verona High School. So welcome. Uh, we have some fun things uh, planned for you this evening. Um, but thank you so much for coming today. And uh, you're going to learn a lot of really cool stuff about a great program we have here. Thank you, Miss Willoughby and Miss Claire McEwitt. Hi, guys. My name is Claire McEwitt. I have the distinct honor of teaching the juniors and the seniors here at the Center for Communications. So I get them when they are oh so wise and mature and smart. Right? Right? Isn't that right, True right. Love? Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome. All right. And Mr. Matthew Cheney. Hey, guys. I'm Matthew Cheney. Uh, I am the freshman. English and communications teacher, and I also teach a section of 12th grade communications. This is my first year at the center, but so far, I'm loving every minute of it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cheney. Mr. Jason Liebler. Do we have you, Mr. Liebler? He's back. He's behind the scenes kind of running some things for us, so I'm not sure if he's with us right now. Oh, Are I'm you? here. I'm definitely, it would help if I actually unmuted myself as I'm running behind the scenes, trusting everything to me. Um, my name is Jason Liebler. I uh, teach AP literature uh, 12th grade. Uh, I'm also the instructional coach at Verona High. Thank you, Mr. Liebler. Mr. Brad Beyer. I am the broadcast instructor. I work with 9 through 12. I get them all four years and we do all kinds of fun stuff in the studio and outside the studio and all things video. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Byer. Kind of the uh, man behind, you're the, usually the man with the plan. So uh, we, uh, as a broadcast instructor, it's a bit different. Uh, most of our teachers are teachers of record, which means we have students assigned to us. Mr. Byer is a bit different. He is a broadcast instructor, so he doesn't have students assigned to him um, that, where he provides a grade, which sometimes I think the students like a little better, though what they don't realize all the time is that he does grade them. Um, it's as a broadcast instructor, he does, as he mentioned, um, get to work with all different uh, grade levels and on a variety of projects. So, Mr. Corey Calder, if you could um, introduce yourself, please. Hey, Corey, hey, I'm Corey Calder, admin intern of uh, Verona High School. I pulled a Liebler and left my mic on mute, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's my first year as admin over the English department, and I supervise a lot of the Center for Communications. I've actually taught a lot of the juniors and seniors which I absolutely love. This is a family uh, feel like no other. So just happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ms. Calder. Ms. Kai Butler is the Director of School Counseling. Ms. Butler. Hey guys, good evening. I am Kai Butler, Ms. Kai Butler. I am the School Counseling Director, but I'm also in charge of the Center for Communication Students. So you'll be hanging out with me a lot as students at Verona, so welcome. All right, and last but not least, Mr. Darren Thompson, our principal at Verona High School. So, Mr. Thompson. All right, great evening, great people. And again, I'm Mr. Thompson, principal here uh, at this wonderful and amazing place we call Verona High School. And I'll just say welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, thanks so much. When we typically do our open house in person, we move to different rooms and have a lot of different activities planned. So we wanted to, to do something similar um, tonight. We're not gonna be switching rooms, but we are going to be switching activities. 
I do have just a quick little video. One of the things that we did, um, Ms. McEwitt did with the seniors and with the juniors, um, she asked for them to create a video um, about Verina High School. So why would you or why should you as a student, an eighth grader, choose Verina High School? And what could you learn about us? So we did another video that was called the best of the Center for Communications. And then another, yet another one that was a tour of our center. So we are located at Verona High School in building number nine. We do have our own building that we also share with the English department. And I wanted to share this video with you. This is one that was created by senior Kennedy McDonald. And she is talking to you about why you should come to Verina and of course the Center for Communications. So here we go. Welcome to Verina boys and girls. Welcome to a place you'll soon be calling home. With a student body of over 1,500, it is a home for athletes, artists, creators, and scholars. You may be asking yourself, why Verina? Well, I'm here to tell you why. Whether you call Verina your zone school or you're here for our center, I'm sure we have something to offer. Speaking of the center, Verina High School is home to the Center for Communications and Media Relations. It is a place for students to explore and digest the world of cinematography. It is all things editing, filming, photography, to collaboration and speaking. Take a chance and become part of a lifelong family. You might even meet my friends and I, the class of 2021. Verina is also home to a diverse staff who advocate for equity and inclusion. There is a vast selection of hands-on counselors and highly interactive teachers. There are people here who can help you with your current academics and your future as well. As a student, I have created highly personal teacher-student relationships with both my teachers and counselors. They take the initiative to become one with their students and care to cultivate relationships. Verina has numerous sports and opportunities to offer. It is home to the Verina Blue Devils. It is important for our students to have fun, both academically and outside of the classroom. Whether you play football, basketball, volleyball, or softball, I can be sure that Verina is the place for you. I don't intend to take up too much of your time here. However, I must say that as a Verina High School student, I definitely wouldn't want to be anywhere else. High school has its ups and downs from crazy hair days to fun Christmas parties. However, I must say, stepping into my future, I'm so proud to call myself a Brian Blue Devil. All right. And again, that was Kennedy McDonald. And um, we're just excited that the students love this project so much. So we'll have some more of these examples up on our YouTube page um, that we'll share with you later. And we'll also um, be posting them on our Instagram, our school Instagram page, and some of our um, like our Facebook and social media that we have. Um, we have some panelists here to join us today um, with our town hall, but we also have some other students who are in the center who are as part of this um, Teams meeting who can also jump in um, should they want to share some information. And then we're going to go with Miss McEwitt. She's going to share some information with us about camera angles and doing some interactive work with us. And we will wrap it up before our closing session with Mr. Willoughby, who is going to have you do a quick little scavenger hunt for our town hall. Our panelists tonight, of course, me, I'm the director, as I said earlier, the director for the Center for Communications, Miss Butler, who is the director of school counseling, Mr. Darren Thompson, who is our principal, Kamaya Adebayo, and Kamaya is a junior in the center. We have Michaela Martin, who is a senior in the center, and James Love, who is also a senior in the center. To share some information about the Center for Communications, um, I will go back and share some info in a moment about our, um, our curriculum and what a, a four-year plan looks like for us. Uh, but before I do that, I just want our students to have a chance to talk. Um, and for our students to just share information about who they are and um, maybe a, a experience that they had that they really enjoyed. So Michaela, I am going to throw it to you first. So Michaela, if you could talk to us, um, you are a senior, so talk to us about an experience that you had maybe as an underclassman where you were a little unsure of yourself and in the end you learned something or maybe you gained some confidence because of an, because of an activity that we had done or uh, just Think back to your younger years. 
Okay, um, first off, hello everyone, our future center people, you know, but um, yes, my name is Michaela Martin. I am a senior and something that has um, gained my confidence in some in the aspect of communications was probably when it was my sophomore year, we had done a project about graphic design and I had no clue. I had no prior knowledge coming into, you know, learning about the things about graphic design, what Photoshop was. I did not know how to use that at all. So, but I, I had gained more knowledge as the um, curriculum had went on. Our teacher had gave us these pointers and tools and I was not confident in my work at all until she came. And then we had, we had a lot of help and then it actually, my piece had actually ended up um, winning one of the prizes to um, to be showcased at this. It was um, it was an art showcase. It was really nice. Well, that had gained my confidence. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I um, I actually remember very specifically that piece that you were talking about. I'm like, dang, look at this that Michaela just created. This is amazing. So it's so cool to be able to see that development in our students and to see um, that confidence grow. So James, I am going to ask you, um, James, if you could share with us an experience, um, and I similar to what I had asked you previously, um, you're involved in a lot of things here on campus. Um, so talk about your involvement as both a center student, but then also as um, just a student at large and um, share some of your experiences that you've had um, as a Verona student as well as a center student. Well, to speak about Verona, I have to first preface it by um, I was not zoned to Verona. I'm supposed to go to Hot Springs as I came from Fairfield. But as I got into Verona, I became involved in many different things. I'm a part of a, I'm a part of the marching band for you your student and probably a future officer. I'm a part of the National Honor Society where I am the president, I'm a part of the Science National Honor Society. And I recently started a new club with my friend Darnell, who's also in the band, uh, the Black Student Association, where I am the president of that club as well. So, and along with that, I've gotten numerous leadership, leadership skills and able to get my feet wet in many different things. And also I'm a part of the baseball team as well. So I'm able to have multiple different leadership skills and give up my time and my efforts to the school. And along with that, I am a part of the, where I'm a part of 27 other different students in my class where we do different projects and such. So the center is a family and you get to enjoy many different things, learn different skills that you can bring to many different fields. Well, I, where I want to become an astrophysicist, so that really doesn't have anything to do with the center, but it allows me to be able to step into a field and be able to share my ideas in a way that Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do. Awesome. Thanks so much, James. All right, Kamaya, it's your turn. So Kamaya, as my uh, my junior, my lone junior who I'd asked to be a part of this panel, um, tell me, I'm going to let you just share whatever you want to. So you can um, share about being a, a center student from the West End who joined us. You can share about your experience on the announcements, I, whatever you want to talk about. Go for it. Hi, I'm Kamaya, and I was originally, originally uh, zoned to Glen Allen. Um, I came from Hungry Creek, and the transition to uh, the CFC was difficult for me um, because I didn't know anybody. But being with the same people for four years, it definitely gives you that vibe where you can just be yourself and know how to communicate better. And then it's skills that help you in the long run. And I definitely think that you guys attending the center would be worth it. Awesome, thanks so much. All right, so Ms. Butler, as our Director of School Counseling, can you talk a little bit about the partnership that you do with the Center for Communications? Sure, so good evening again. Um, I love the Center for Communications. Um, my seniors that aren't here get on my nerves, like I mentioned the last time, but I love to be able to work directly with my kids. I'm really big on relationships, um, so I pop into classes sometimes and talk about things 
soft skills. I know we're kind of trying to adjust to virtual learning, time management, things like that. So if you are a part of the center, you get more of this individualized attention from me than you would in a school at large, just because there's uh, not a lot of kids that are in the Center for Communication. So you really get to kind of have me to yourself, which is awesome. So I have groups with some of the kids. I eat lunch with them on Wednesday, some of my girls. Um, actually just had a meeting with Michaela and dad the other day, yesterday. So just um, I just love the fact that I'm able to really connect with the kids um, more on a personal basis um, than I would have been able to with a, a larger population of students. So love the CFC and MR. <laughs> Thanks, Ms. Butler. And to kind of piggyback on some of the information that she has shared, um, she talked about the smaller class size and such. So as a, as a center, um, we are able to take up to 50 students in our um, freshman class. So um, that does make the class size a little smaller um, for you to have. And there's, that means that there are a total of 200 students um, able to be in the Center for Communication. So um, you really do get some individualized attention with just um, 200 students in centers. Um, and again, just a chance to become a family. So thinking about a family, um, Mr. Thompson, I know that's one of your big things is uh, family. You're having this family atmosphere at Verina High School. So this is your first year as principal here at Verina. Um, and I, as I asked you the last session too, can you share a little bit about your vision um, and how, like your vision for Verina and this, um, the, our idea of this one family that we are here at Verina and how the center also works into that? Okay, um, sure thing. Um, well, I, I'll share that the vision is essentially and I shared this before in the uh, first session that our the, the vision is just to be the mecca of Henrico County when we talk about Verona High School, to be the jewel of the East and also a seat of excellence when we talk about high schools. Uh, we definitely pride ourselves in terms of my approach, in terms of the vision on building authentic relationships behind that, um, where everyone feels welcome, regardless of who they are, who they are, where they came from. And with that sense of family, it's a connection when we talk about staff to staff, staff to student, student to student, and along with that, there's a premium placed on rigorous, high quality instructional programming that prepares students to think and compete globally. And that's where the center comes into play. That That's the sauce that makes us different from the other schools and gives us the ability to allow students to pursue their purpose and passion. Thank you so much, Mr. Thompson. So oh. with curriculum, he mentioned curriculum and just some things that we do in the in the center for sure. It's important that we that we really dig into our curriculum. Talking about like our broadcast program that we have, our broadcast journalism. We do have graphic design. We also design the newspaper, write for the newspaper. We have an online newspaper that we're that we've created, um, especially since we're in this pandemic and don't really have another way to share our news as a school. We do have a school newspaper, again, online. Um, principles and Foundations of Communication. So teaching you a lot of that information your freshman year. So you have that foundation that's built for you. And then building upon that, that foundation, your 10th, 11th, and 12th grade years, there's a lot of hands-on work that happens. We develop your presentation skills, your reading and writing skills, your research skills. Those are skills that, like James mentioned earlier, that are gonna take you to that next level of your education. So taking you on to college, ready to do presentations, ready to, to have some really healthy discussions in your class and being able to articulate your viewpoint. I know that a couple of the students in here can talk about when they joined the Center for Communications, they were a little shy and there's nothing wrong with being shy, but learning how to, as an extrovert, um, it's easy for me to share, but as an introvert, sometimes it's a little harder to share and learning how to share your points and to communicate how you feel is something that we certainly work on here in the center. Some print media, we focus on print media, um, advertising and public relations, looking at social media, audio and video production, photography and design skills, one of my very favorite things to teach with uh, photography and design, and then new and emerging technologies. You know, as we've even seen just this school year, how quickly technology is changing to adapt to virtual learning. Your sample curriculum, um, if you've not had a chance to look at the Loom video that we created for the Center for Communications, this gives you just a quick overview of what it's like to be a center student. Your ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade years, you do take communications. Your ninth grade year, it is one credit, but then your 10th, 11th, and 12th grade years, it's two credits, communications is, and it's a double blocked class. So currently, like for my sophomores, currently I have them first block, so I see them every day. And then every other day, I have them for first and second block. So that means I have them on our virtual schedule from 9 o'clock until 1130. When we're in a normal school plan and a normal school year, 
that's from nine o'clock until about 12. So it's a long class block where we have a lot of time to do some hands-on work. Uh, that hands-on development continues in 11th and 12th grade with those double block classes. We will also see that English is different. We do have English that is offered specifically for center students. Our curriculum is a little bit different than 9th and 10th grade. It is a, a bit more advanced. It does move at a faster pace, and that's to prepare you for AP English in your 11th and 12th grade years. So many people ask us, well, do I have to take a high school credit while I'm in middle school? No, you don't have to, but it definitely does help you. So if you do have that class that you can take, you're enrolled in that now, you're in algebra, that's good. It's going to help you out in the long run. If you're in algebra and world history, that's even better because it allows you, again, just to open up your schedule a little bit. But at the same time, if not, if you're not in those classes yet, it's OK. We will work with you. We'll um, help guide you through that. That's the reason why we have the amazing Miss Butler. She's really great at working with you and developing your schedule, really helping you focus on your plan. Um, here's some pictures of what it's like, what it looks like in our studio. We do have two studios that are ours that nobody, I mean, they're ours. We, you know, there are other schools that maybe they might have a little tiny studio, nothing compared to what we have. So uh, we do love our center building and the uh, location that we have. You'll see a picture of the control room with students here working the controls for the announcements. And then we have another video that I want to share with you. But before I do that, and before we go to the next session, Sage, I'm going to throw it to you for a second. Yes, ma'am. All right, Sage, so you are a sophomore in the Center for Communications. Can you talk to um, our guest tonight about what it's been like to do the announcements this year? It's definitely different. Uh -huh. So share it with us about the announcements and what, the, what we do for the announcements. So, yes, it is very different this year. You're not, um, I don't think, it's not as nerve-wracking if it was live, you know? So right now we're like pre-recording our announcements every night, like the night before the day it will be uploaded. And um, we get a script and everything, we practice and mark it up and how we wanna read and present it to everybody on YouTube and whoever watches it on YouTube and to the school that they play it in the morning in every class on virtual class. And um, Mr. Vire actually edits the videos for us. So probably soon we're probably gonna be editing them ourselves. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I feel it, I feel it coming. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but it's been a very interesting um, experience doing it on virtual. I mean, it's not bad, I should say. And we have schedules every marking period and everybody takes turns. Everybody will get to do it. Don't worry. But um, it's really interesting. It's not as stressful as it would be on live, but I think live is still fun. So that's right. pretty much it. Thank you. Mr. Byer, do you want to share a little bit more information about our morning announcements that we do um, and it's how it's run by our sophomore class? Sure. Uh, every morning, if you're on the announcements crew and the announcement crews rotate out, everyone has a job. You either are audio, you're running the audio board, you're directing the show, which means you're hitting the physical buttons to switch the shots and making sure everybody else is doing their job. You can be running music, the prompter with the words. Uh, you can host the show, which means you'll be reading live to the rest of the school and on YouTube. So parents, you can watch at home. There's floor directors, camera operators, uh, sometimes as a junior and sometimes sophomores make graphics for the show. So we try to get as many hands involved as a real life production as possible. And we're live, so mistakes happen on air and that's how you grow. And often that's when they learn the most. When you see somebody mess up and say something they shouldn't have, it usually doesn't happen again live. And oftentimes that's the, the most fun 20 minutes of every day. Yep. Is, is that is the live announcements. Yep, we go live at 902 every morning when we're in the building. So, um, you know, we have a question in the chat that's talking about transportation. So just to touch on that for a second, because sometimes transportation can affect our morning announcements or people might think that it would.
monitoring the chat over here to make sure that we don't have any other questions there. Oh, Miss Butler has a question. Yes, Miss Butler. <laughs> I didn't have a question, but I wanted to kind of um, speak to uh, the scheduling for students. So regardless of if you go, hopefully you'll be a part of the center. Um, but I just wanted to say that most kids take PE9 and PE10 during the summer just to kind of free up some of that space in their schedule. So that's just something to kind of consider. Don't know what the, you know, the summer schedule is going to look like in terms of virtual or in person. Um, but I would recommend that students at least take PE9 um, this summer if you're planning on being a part of the center. With this um, next little video that's called the best of the Center for Communications. And as I mentioned earlier, we had our students who um, submitted some information about our, our creative videos as to why um, Verona is the best location, um, as well as why the center is the best. What's up? I'm Davis Daly, a senior in the center at Verona, and I'm about to tell you why the Center for Communications is so amazing. The teachers. The teachers in the center are some of the best I've ever had. Their upbeat and energetic personalities make class fun and something to look forward to. You can tell they really care and have taken the time to get to know each and every one of us on a personal level. The assignments. We do get a lot of projects. However, the assignments we get are fun, creative, and entertaining, not boring and stressful. Many of our assignments are in class, so we don't really have to worry about them outside of school. We do many relevant assignments and projects in the center that apply to all fields of mass communications, and they're all interactive. Many are with partners and groups, which make it way more fun. Opportunities. Since we do projects in all fields of mass communications, this opens up so many paths for the future, like photography, journalism, graphic design, filmmaking, even advertising, where sometimes we work with paying clients. And that was just to name a few. There are tons and tons of other careers that use the skills learned here. Other than the assignments we do in class, we also get the unique opportunities to practice with Henrico's production crew to do events like basketball and football live streams, where we get to be the production crew. Here's a clip of me being the sideline reporter for one of our home football games against Henrico High School. From Isaiah Page and good defense and offense. What's the game plan looking like for the second half of the game? So, as the old saying goes, the first five minutes of the second half would normally tell the outcome. We get the ball coming out of We also get a chance to expand our knowledge with cool field trips that make the learning experience unique and bring us closer together. The family. Now here is possibly the most important part of the center. I'd be lying to you if I said anything other than joining the center has been one of the best decisions of my life. The everlasting friendships and bonds created with the students and teachers are unlike no other, as they are responsible for half of the fun I've had since being in high school. Everyone gets along so well and it creates a positive atmosphere that makes class something to look forward to every day. Sometimes in life, you don't really realize how much fun you had until it's almost gone. Words truly can't explain how much I'm grateful for the people in the center. When you join the center, you're not just joining a class, but a family. And when we close tonight, I'll come back and share this information with you about the applications and how do you apply um, to be a part of the Center for Communications and Media Relations. I hope this is giving you a little bit, a little glance into uh, what we do. You know, there's so much we could talk about. I mean, we have won Emmys. Uh, we have won state awards. We, I mean, we just have a ton of stuff that has happened. But you won't know unless you don't, unless you experience it. We need you here. We would love to have you experience this and be a part of us. So, um be a part of that. Join us. Uh, we'd love for you to be able to win these awards and have these great friendships and become part of our family as well. So with that, I'm going to toss to Miss McEwitt um, and she's going to um, lead us through some uh, camera work and um, asking some questions. Having um, She has some juniors here with her um, who are going to help um, run this session. So without further ado, go McEwitt. All right, let's see if this thing wants to let me share my screen. My juniors I have here, if you would please introduce yourselves and let us know the amazing middle school that you went to. Savannah. 
So, hi, I'm Savannah, and I went to Roth Middle School. Nice. Thank you. Lexi? Hi, I'm Lexi. I came from Elko Middle School, and I'm a junior in the Center for Communications. Awesome. Thank you. Miss Kayla? Hi, everyone. So, my name is Kayla, as you know, and I'm in the Center of Communications, and I went to Fairfield Middle School. Sweet. I love it. So we've got a pretty wide variety of middle schoolers that um, get funneled into Verina High School. Okay. Um, so I know that you guys have been seeing a lot of videos that my juniors and seniors have produced um, about why Verina and about why CFC is the best center. So I wanted to show you another one of those um, because I think it just speaks volumes as to, I mean, we as adults, can tell you all night long about how this is a great place to work, how we love our kids, how we are getting them all these opportunities. But what you're really going to believe at the end of the day is what our kids have to say. So this one was produced by one of our juniors, um, Alana, and it pretty much sums up everything about why you should come to Verina. Hi, and welcome to Verina High School. Here are some reasons why we are the best school in Henrico. Verina has a beautiful outdoor campus with lots of open space. Verina has lots of great school spirit. We have fun pep rallies to encourage our school spirit. We have some of the best sports teams in the state of Virginia, including our basketball and football teams which bring our school a lot of pride. And of course, we always take time for a little dance party. We have a close community here at Verina, where everyone is greeted with a smile. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you back soon. So that is all the reasons why you should come to Verina. All right, everybody ready for your very first lesson here at CFC. We are talking about some camera angles. We have Captain America and Dude with Big Hammer looking way up into the sky. This is called a high angle shot, otherwise known as a bird's eye view. We also have this big bad guy looking down into the camera. Um, Lexi, what's this angle called? That is a low angle. I love it. Um, Savannah, what is an extreme low angle called? The triple chin shot. <laughs> Savannah, you know, I will never forgive you for taking that shot of me, but that's okay. <laughs> we call it the triple chin shot because once upon a time, Savannah was on the lower case of the gym and managed to shoot a picture of yours truly, and it seriously looks like I've got a bad case of puff face. But we like to call this the worm's eye view shot. Now, the main difference between these two shots is, this, is the psychology of presentation. Here in the high angle, your guys look small and puny, as opposed to the low angle where your person, your subject, is going to look big and strong and imposing, okay? So those are the two main differences between these shots. Um, I would like to turn it back over to my juniors. And the question on deck is, what is some of the cool stuff that you have gotten to shoot either photographs or video for us here at the center or maybe outside of the center? And we're just going to go straight down the line. Savannah, then Lexi, then Kayla. Lay it on me, Savannah. So in the center, I have gotten the opportunity to take pictures for basketball games. So the, uh, we did a live stream last year that ended up on TV for basketball. And I was taking pictures for Atlee, which is who we were actually playing. And outside of the center, I've gotten the opportunity to take pictures for weddings and take pictures for um, a, a website for a literally basketball team, Easton uh, Youth Basketball, if anybody knows anybody that plays. I was there taking pictures at every game. So, yeah, that's what I've gotten to do because of the center. I love it. All right, Lexi. So in the center, one thing that we got to record were interviews for this. 
And this is our motto at Verina, and it stands for thoughtful, honorable, inspiring, and safe. So we got to choose one teacher to go on an interview that followed this, and we interviewed them and put together a video package. So that was really fun. And something else that I've done outside the center was I photographed wrestling matches and got to take a lot of cool pictures. How hard is it to photograph sports? That's pretty hard to try to get it in action without blurriness. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Sage Lynn, I saw you. I saw you. You're saying it's pretty hard too. What sports have you photographed? And then we're well, coming. To I haven't photographed anything at the school so far, but I have photographed like things outside of the school, and it's hard to get things in motion. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely, it is. That's one of the um, more important, what well, more useful skills that we um, get to teach you here is photography. All right, Kayla, tell me something. What have you gotten to shoot and record? Okay, so in the center, we've gone to shoot and record live announcements every morning for Verina, and we use professional equipment and cameras and everything you would use at an actual studio and, and like, when they produce news for the whole world. And we learn how to and get the anchors in good view. And we go back and forth and go between cameras to make the shots look perfect. And then everyone just learns how to do and talk in front of, talk professionally in front of the whole school and I just, that was one of my favorite things to go to every morning. And we got a lot of experience in that. So since he just popped up, who taught you how to do all those amazing things, Kayla? Mr. Vine. Mr. Vine. Always team effort, team effort. <laughs> we might have stressed him out a little bit, but. Wait, that's, was, that's what you're supposed to say, Vi, your team effort, but it really is you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it was fun, though. Love it. So um, you guys have had a chance to hear from my students, and I know that we have been showing you a lot of these videos, the best of CFC and Y Varina. I have time to show you one more. Um, this was put together by another one of my juniors, um, the tallest, goofiest junior of them all. He's not in here, so I'm allowed to say that, okay? Hello, and welcome to the CFC. My name is Raven, and here's a quick rundown of what we do. As you see, here is an image of a few of my many colleagues. Here is Caitlin. Here is Naya. And here is Jason. As projected here, you can see two other colleagues at the set of our tremendous show, The Blue Devil's Advocate. But we also dance. And dress up. And dance some more. Here in CFC, we believe that fun is just as important as education. And although it can get tough, we always do our best to achieve greatness in not only our classwork, but our friendships too. And that's what's best about CFC. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you can consider CFC as the school it's best for you. Thank you. So uh, last year in Mr. Willoughby and Mrs. Kraft's class, um, it was a TikTok party almost every morning in the presentation room. And we don't necessarily uh. encourage that, but that's kind of sort of what happened. But that was, that was everybody before the morning announcements happened, right? Right. So yeah, that was last year. This year they're very serious. There's no dancing at all. Yeah, TikTok really blew up last year. So we were like, like in the throw, like kids were doing it all the time. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. And that's, you know, that's the thing that we love about the center is that, you know, we talk about this family atmosphere, but I think that's the, what you guys can see, you know, we are, we do have a good time. We do have fun together. Um, you know, we are field trips. I, that's some of my favorite time just to get off campus and be together as a class or even as a center, we had two full center field trips last year um, with the opportunity. So I mean, I just love being able to take 
uh, the kids to see things, you know, off campus, do things a little bit differently, but it's all about that bonding too um, and having time, you know, to spend together. So um, it's some good stuff. Ms. McEwen, is there anything else that you wanted to share before we uh, move on to Mr. Willoughby? Um, I am super excited and I will see you guys soon. That's all I got. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, thank you, uh, students and the the last juniors. Uh, you guys are great. It's good to good to see you. I got to teach them all last year, so it's good to see them again because uh, we uh, we see each other a lot as well. We used to, but uh, now we get to see each other virtually. So yay! Um, so hello, uh, my name is Aaron Willoughby, and uh, I'm going to be doing a little session with Mr. Vire. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a couple things for you. We're going to talk about the Building Nine that we have all of our awesome stuff in. Uh, so we have a good video that we're going to show you first, uh, and then after the video, we're going to talk a little bit more about what we do in those spaces. Welcome to Building Nine. When you first enter, you'll be in the lobby. Here you can spend time before your classes start, do work, or just talk to your friends. A lot of the time, you can find others filming, taking pictures, or just working on projects. Next, we have Studio One, which is where we film our morning announcements. Here is also where we film some other projects, from videos for Hermico County to videos for the VHSL. Also in the studio, you can find us working on photo projects and taking lots of pictures. You will hardly ever find us in the classroom, but when you do, we are working hard on one of our projects, whether that may be writing scripts, or having parties, it's always a great time. Up next, we have our presentation room, where you can often find us presenting our best works, but sometimes you can catch us having a dance party. But we aren't always stuck indoors. Sometimes we take our projects outdoors where we can take pictures, film, or conduct interviews. We can't wait to meet you, class of 2025. That's great. And that was by another student. Her name was Kaya McRae. Uh, she actually is also in our drama club, too, so she does a lot of theatrical things, too, which is something that you also can do since I am that advisor. Um, anyway, uh, so Mr. Meyer talked a lot about um, – and we mentioned before that there's there's two studios here. Can you tell me a little bit more about – what? there's two studios? That's crazy. Tell me more <laughs> about that. Well, i like to say I have the coolest classroom in Henrico, and – I think it looks the coolest too, personally. Anyway, um, we have one main studio where we film the announcements. There's a blue screen there. We film all kinds of things in there. The other studio is kind of a scratch studio. It changes from a day-to-day -day basis. Students kind of move things around, make messes, clean them up sometimes. Um, and a lot of projects happen in there and things get shifted around. That's where we keep the props and students bring in props. And we very rarely limit what they can film. They come up with everything creative. They write the script, they decide, they do the planning. So we have two large rooms to try to help them facilitate whatever their vision is. And that's what I try to do as well. Awesome, awesome, that's great. Great, thank you, Mr. Vire. Um, uh, Brayden, I know we also mentioned that there's a, a presentation room. Can you tell me what, what are kind of some things that happen in this presentation room? So um, we do, we present, we do speeches and we present projects and stuff that we do at the center, it's pretty nice. That's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those rare things you don't think about it too often, but it's great that we have a room where uh, we can always come together to and we need to have like a large, almost center meeting. We can almost almost get everybody in the room. It's a tight squeeze. We've tried it a couple of times, uh, but it's a good place to have guest speakers come and talk to us as well. Um, as you see, you saw a couple of clips, clips of people doing a dance party for Christmas. We always had like uh, they have, we have a nice big projector there. So we had. I think I was playing like just dance and we were just dancing around and we had a good time. Um, so we, we tend to have fun during those, uh, those celebration places and times. And so it's, uh, it's good to let loose a little bit. Um, uh, uh, let's see what else we all, we also have the presentation room. Uh, we also have the labs. I know that, that we have uh, not only two TV studios, we also have two awesome labs. Um, uh, Sage, can you tell me a little bit about your experiences in the labs that you've used before, either the design or in the video lab? Yeah, so we have two labs that I think we're like the only school in Henrico that has two labs filled with Macs, like Mac desktops that's used for the students that I'm, pre I'm pretty sure we're only the only um, school. But yeah, we learn about editing and buyers demand with the editing. We learn a lot about keying and 
um, graphic design also in the other lab. And um, it's pretty awesome. You learn new skills and new things that you probably would never know that like the behind the scenes of things and movies. So it's really interesting to learn all those different skills. And it's not usually, you can use those skills in different um, careers also. So mm. that's what I really learned about it. Great. Great. Thank you, Sage. Uh, um, Kaya, or not Kaya, sorry. Uh, Lexi, do you have anything you want to add about the uh, the labs? I see that you really like those labs. Is there anything you want to, else you want to add about those those labs? I just think those labs are really fun, and you get to cr be creative and just create your own personal package and just designs that are amazing. And you learn a lot in those labs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Great. Thank you very much. Good, good. Um, so that's just a kind of an overview of our Building 9. Um, like I said, we also share Building 9 with the English department as well. Uh, so there are also some really amazing English teachers that we work with together and we collaborate with. So we uh, we really have a nice uh, – we like Building 9. It's our favorite building on the campus because this is where we are. Uh, so we love it here. Um, I really enjoy uh, – this is my uh, this is my fifth year at the center, and I really – uh, really enjoy every year uh, that something else comes up that makes it even more exciting to be here. Um, so I really uh, cherish the students that are here and the the people that I work with. So it's, it makes it a lot of it's a lot of fun to come here. We do a lot of good work, but we also have a lot of um, uh, a lot of freedom to kind of play and really um, allow ourselves to teach students what we really want to teach them. Uh, so I really uh, appreciate that. Um, so I I think it's a it's a great place to be and. Um, I hope you uh, you get to join us too. I will say I really appreciate um, the team effort, how we as a team get to teach the kids. Um, and I love, and I'm sure that this is probably the millionth time that it's been said tonight. I love seeing the growth of the kids, even though they might not necessarily be my students until they're a junior or a senior, I get to see them grow immensely from little bitty freshies to slightly larger softies to big bad juniors to all knowing seniors. It is amazing to get to see the growth and it's amazing because not every teacher gets to be with their kids or see the same students for four years. And we are lucky enough to do that. So that's pretty amazing. Absolutely. I agree too. Just about the application process. So I'm going to share my screen for just a second, how to apply to the Center for Communications um, and what we're looking for. So yes, there is a test that is going to be provided to you. Your middle school is going to coordinate that test. As you look at this, you see what we're looking for. There's a multiple choice portion of the test, and then there is an essay. I promise you, we read every single thing you give us. We read everything that you write. Please proofread. It's important that you take time to check over um, what you have written. Um, the center project is a required project this year. Um, we are, there's one question, but a variety of ways that you can answer this question. So trying to give you some voice and choice. Be creative. We want to see what you come up with. Um, your grades as middle school students do count, um, as well as do your teacher recommendations. So find that teacher um, to get them to fill out the recommendation for you. Um, it could be somebody from seventh grade since you maybe knew them a little better than your eighth grade teachers, but it's okay to ask your eighth grade teachers too. Virtual learning is still important, and so we want to make sure that we hear from your teachers about you. So as you saw on the form, you have a chance to shadow. So come see us. It's a, um, and I say see in quotes because it would be a virtual shadowing uh, for at least the, the portion of the second nine weeks when we're going to do shadowing. There's possibly an opportunity in the spring if you're accepted to do some work and come to the center, um, but we're working out those details for how things return when we are no longer virtual. So you'll see my email address is here. Feel free to contact me. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have and shut up, set up that shadowing too. Some application reminders. The application is posted on Tuesday. Um, so Isabel, you'll be able to see that application on Tuesday and see um, what we're requiring for our recommendations. Um, there are two recommendations that we're asking for for the center. Um, so, and I would suggest that you talk to somebody who is a core teacher. So a math, um, English, history, you know, a, you know, science teacher, one of those teachers would be good um, to give some feedback for you. If you can also look at this, you'll see that January 15th is our deadline for students. So making sure that you've submitted by that date. 
And then um, there's access that's provided to you on March 5th to let you know where your status is and whether you've been accepted or not. And then we have some deadline dates for wait list and all the other stuff. It gets a little technical. All of, the, of this information is available in the Henrico Schools website. So you can go to henricoschools.us and click on schools and then specialty centers, and it will take you to all this information. Um, we are so thankful that you have joined us. We're so thankful that you've taken the time out of your very busy schedule, I'm sure, um, to spend time with us tonight. Um, so thank you, students. Thank you, eighth graders. Thank you so much to the students for the Center for Communications and the work that you put in tonight, um, our spokespeople, um, and how you shared with the students tonight about how great our center is. Um, and thank you to the staff for the Center for Communications as well. Um, center teachers, you are always such a joy. It's always a pleasure to work with you. So um, students, thanks again, and we hope to see you shadow with us sometime soon. So have a great night.